Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go over async. Um, async is a version or a variant, I should say, of a future. Um, the idea basically, well, let's just go over it real quickly. I'm gonna delete this real quick. I've been trying to set this thing up. Let's print it out. What's going on? So the first, it says first function, print first. Second function, print second. Third function, oh, print third. Pretty original, right? But here in the second, I'm going to have a for statement. The only purpose for this is to basically, um, it's create a latency. Okay, so what's going to happen is when you call void, hang on. Uh, there we go. When, when you um, call the second function called second, it's going to go through this loop just an endless loop, and it's going to take time to do that before we actually hit the second and third. But it, we're going to list first, second, and third. And in Dart, remember, starts from the beginning and goes successively from there on. Let's just print this out and see what happens. First, second, and third. So you notice the little pause in between there before it hits second and third. That was the loop right inside of here. And we can add more zeros, but that's going to make this video much, much longer, okay? So what if I don't want to do that? What if I want to do the print print them as quickly as possible if there is a delay right here just skip it and go to the second go to go to what's next i would have to put an async right here that just basically lets dart know that this thing don't wait up if you don't have to just pass it on by and it will return a future and when the future is done then it will go ahead and print it Okay, so if I put that, I'm going to have to probably change that right here, future. It's no longer void. This is going to be a future right here. So just by putting async before the brackets, after the function, and after the call, the parameters, um, that's what you're going to have to do. All right, so let's run it and see what happens. First, third, and second kicks in after that. This is a little sometimes unpredictable in terms of how fast it is. It's not a great latency. It's just a, I just made it up, okay? So, but we notice what is happening. It goes first, it skips over here, and then it goes to third. And while it actually is waiting for a little bit, eventually this thing sends a signal up inside of here saying, okay, it's ready now. And then it goes ahead and calls it, and it prints the second. So you see how that works? So that's what I actually want to do. We have to change this to a future. And again, it returns a future, even though it's a void, it's a print, right? There's nothing returned. But because it's a future, it does return it, sitting here waiting until, bango, it finally goes through. Couple of things. It's not like, unfortunately, again, this is where, in the last video I mentioned, I thought it was kind of like parallel programming or parallel processing or concurrency or what, whatever that is. So mo doing multiple things at once. You can't put async in front of multiple things. I don't think that's how it works. I don't think that's the purpose of it. I think it's just putting it before. So if you try putting a for statement here and put an async here and here as well, it just doesn't work very well. I'm not exactly sure. I think the purpose of it is just for a one-time thing. If you want to do more parallel type of processing, programming, or concurrency is the other word. Um, you, I think you're supposed to use other things like isolates, but from what I'm reading on isolates, everybody says nobody knows how to use isolates very well, so it doesn't help me very much as a beginner, or an intermediate, excuse me, I'm an intermediate now. So we'll just keep that in mind for the future. Async is just when there is a latency and you want to keep going through from that. But what if, for example, like we talked about futures, what if you don't want to return something too quickly you want to wait on it until I get the results. So if I don't want to get call this just yet, I want to wait on it. So I want it to be first, second, and third. I don't want it to be first, third, and second. Okay? You can remove that future, but let's just say you couldn't remove it for some reason. So say, for example, this was a call to a website, and you were downloading something, and it was taking time. It wasn't just a for statement. It was downloading something, and you, you wanted to wait for it before you actually called the third, but there was some reason that you had to keep it in line like this, all right? What you would do is you would put async right here. Whoops. You got to spell it right, though async right inside of here and let's run it nothing different right, right? 
the same, right? But what you would put is so like the future, future, right? Future, and you need for it. You don't need to write uh, object dot then. You could just say async await. Let's give this a little time. Wait for this, no matter how long it takes, then go on to the next step. Okay? It's coming, and second and third. So that do it. So async and await just in and of itself, so that you can actually wait to come through onto the next one. All right. So I hope that's clear. Um, it's just a way of making things more in order and more predictable when you need to um, do that. I think that's going to be a lot more clear in the future when we deal with things like web pages, sockets, again, streams, and stuff like that. But further now, it's just the idea and the concept that we're going through, and we'll keep going from there. Okay? Thanks.